Hey everyone, welcome back to day two of the 2021 Virtual Road to California show. Now, as promised, today's demonstrations are going to revolve around what we call our fundamental tools. And these are the tools that I designed to deal with those basic shapes, those basic building blocks that we find ourselves using over and over and over again when we're doing machine piecework. You know, these are the tools that I always recommend to those beginners, to you rookies, for first have tools in your toolbox because they're going to make you look like a superstar right out of the starting gate. And you know, you veteran quilters out there, you may just find the solution to a problem that you've had with your piecework in the past. So don't forget, keep your have it, want it list nearby so that you can check off things that you want to add to your toolbox. And also think about jotting down some questions that you might want to bring to our live Facebook session tomorrow afternoon. Now the Tucker Trimmer tool is actually the very first fundamental tool that I created. And I created this tool to deal with one of our most basic building blocks. Squares divided by a seam. A single seam, half square triangles, multiple seams to create an hourglass unit, or this unit that we call a combination unit that has a full and a partial seam. And like all things Studio 180, I figured out that my building success was always easier if I oversized and then trim things down. So I build these shapes bigger than they need to be on purpose. And you know, trimming down a half square triangle, that's pretty easy. There's lots of tools out there. But the magic really happens when you're dealing with a unit that has multiple diagonals on it. If you look at the tool, the tool has multiple diagonal guidelines. It has guidelines for trimming units to half inch increments and guidelines for trimming units to whole inch increments. And you see a half and a whole circle, that's kind of your cue to how you place the tool on the unit. I happen to be right-handed and I'm trimming this to three and a half inches. So what I'll do is put the half circle in the upper right-hand corner, allowing me to use the two diagonals, the common and the size diagonal, to place right over top of the seams. If you happen to be left-handed, you use the tool by simply placing that half circle in the upper left-hand corner for easy use of the tools again. But what happens is by lining up the diagonal guidelines on the diagonal seam lines, I immediately center the tool over the shape. I don't have to look at horizontal and vertical guidelines when I'm doing that trimming. I never trim very much away. I've got a clean corner, seam properly placed, lift the tool, rotate the unit 180 degrees, and when I reposition this, I'm going to look at the same diagonals, but I'm also going to look at the cleanup lines. So when I'm done, I know I have a square. I have a square that's exactly the right size. All the seams are properly placed, and I'm going to be able to build these pieces into much better blocks. I can take one and another and another and put them all together, and they're all going to meet, and they're all going to match. So the original Tucker Trimmer, Tucker Trimmer 1, does 12 different sizes whole and half inch. We also created a Tucker Trimmer 2 that does um, quarter inch and three quarter inches. Because I'll tell you, if you've ever tried to trim one of these down to three and a quarter inches, you're going to be really wanting to have this Tucker Trimmer 2 in your hand. And we also created the large Tucker Trimmer. This one goes all the way up to 12 inches. It has all the sizes that are in, in this one, but it's got 13 more on it. So put these tools in your hands and you are going to end up making projects that you can be proud of. Tuckerize. Some of you know what that means. Some of you may not. Many of you already tuckerize your patterns. Everybody should. Now, for those of you who don't know what tuckerizing means, I'm going to read you the definition. Tuckerize. It's a verb. It means to convert traditional quilt construction methods to Studio 180 designs, tools, and techniques. Or in other words, to use Studio 180 design tools 
with a pattern written using traditional techniques. Now, this is something that is a very valuable skill that you're going to want to add to your bag of tricks. And it's not hard, but what you're going to need to do are a couple of steps. The first thing you're going to need to do when you look at your pattern is recognize shapes that can be tuckerized. Identify which tools or which techniques we use to build those shapes. And that's pretty easy too. You can download our free um, Uniguide from our website. And then you're going to need to adjust your cutting so that you can take advantage of the tuckerizing of your project. Now, let me give you an example. This quilt behind me is my Lynx quilt. And several years ago, um, I created that quilt, sent it to Fonz and Porter, and it was accepted for publication. It actually made it onto the front cover. And when that happens, I don't write the instructions. The magazine actually writes the instructions for the project. And they did a great job when it came to talking about the Lemoyne stars, using my strip piecing method, using my rapid fire Lemoyne star tool. But when it came to the simpler shapes that surround the smaller star, those flying geese and shaded four patches, they chose methods that I didn't use, nor, and they're perfect shapes to tuckerize. Those flying geese, what they had you do in the instructions was create them with the rectangle and square method where you mark and you fold it back like this. That method for one block would give me this much waste. To tuckerize that, I would use the wing clipper method. Fast flying geese end up with four units slightly oversized and trim them down and end up instead of all those triangles as waste with this little bit of snippets. So you actually save fabric. You use less and you create better units. And when it comes to these shaded four patches that are in the corner, again, the writers at the magazine suggested that you build those with individual square, small triangle, small triangle, and a large triangle, cutting each one specific and trying to put them together perfectly. I know with my shaded four patch technique, I can cut two strips and two rectangles, create those four units, again, with minimal waste going into my trash can. So you can see tuckerizing is something that's very beneficial. It's going to be more efficient. It's going to be more successful. And you are going to build the best quilts of your life if you start to tuckerize your project. But remember, do it first before you cut, because if you cut all those individual shapes, you're pretty much locked in to doing the way that it was written rather than a tuckerizing method. Now my wing clipper tool is a tool that I designed to work with flying geese. Now I know those of you who've been quilting for a while um, have tried lots of different flying geese tools. You're right, there's a lot of them out there, but this is the only tool I've used for the last 10 years since I've had it on the market. And the wing clipper tool has lots of benefits. It has fine lines, it has 10 different size offerings on it, and it works with that fast flying geese technique that you may or may not have tried in the past. The fast flying geese technique is a method where you start with five squares and you end up with four flying geese. And if you've struggled with this in the past, realize it's not just you that struggles. If you cut those precision, then all the other building steps have to be equally precise for those to all be perfect at the end. Well, I'm a realist, not an idealist. Mine never all turn out right. So I make one small change. I simply oversize my squares at the beginning. If these are too big, then these are gonna be too big and the perfect happens at the trim down. And that's what the wing clipper is all about. If I'm going to trim down a unit and I happen to be right-handed, what I'm going to do is set the unit up and the tool up horizontally in front of me. I line the appropriate diagonal guidelines up on the seams that are already sewn and already pressed, and I've got enough fabric to be able to trim that down to a precision size, up and across for right-handed trimming. Now, if you happen to be left-handed, instead of a horizontal placement, you simply place that unit vertically on your mat. That's what's nice about the Studio 180 design tools is that they work equally well for both right-handed and left-handed. Now that's the first trim. Each of those units gets a second trim. So I simply rotate the unit 
position the tool, the tool went up and came right back down. The second position, I've got cleanup lines lined up there and an X that lines right up with the top. So I'm not looking at a regular ruler that has lots of horizontal and vertical lines. I'm looking at a tool that's designed specifically for this shape. And we put this on the market, had 10 sizes. I thought that was plenty, but it wasn't on the market but a month or two. And quilters started coming to me saying, you know what, Deb? We want more. So we did create a second tool. The Wing Clipper 2 does nine additional sizes. The original Wing Clipper will build flying geese that are all half inch and whole inch. One by two, one and a half by three. Whole and half inch increments. The Wing Clipper 2 will build nine additional flying geese, but they're flying geese that finished to something and a quarter or something and three quarter. These are two tools. You'll use the one more than you use number two, but boy, when you, you, when you need a flying goose unit that's one and three quarters by three and a half inches, you're gonna wanna have that tool in your hand as well. So for more information on how the tools work and, and the building and the actual construction processes, you can visit my website and watch the full length video tutorial. Now, if you haven't guessed already, this whole philosophy of making your pieces oversized and trimming them down to create better building blocks is going to build success in your machine piecing endeavors. These are some of the units that we've been talking about making and you can see when I start to put them together, they're gonna line up and be even on the edges. But you might also notice that when I have this scenario, they meet and match in the middle. For those of you who are rookies, you're not going to have to be sewing for 20 years to get successful units that add that sparkle that you want to your quilts. And for you that are veterans, you're going to realize that the Studio 180 design line of tools for the value and all the sizes that you create and the precision of the building blocks are so much better than anything else that's on the market, including templates or dies or tools that tell you if you cut the pieces perfectly, they're gonna be perfect at the end. So get them in your hand, get them in your toolbox, learn how to use the Studio 180 design tools, and you're gonna be creating the very best quilts that you have ever created. And you'll be increasing your success and decreasing your stress because none of us got into quilting to add stress to our lives. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to my square squared tool. And this is a tool that I designed to build and create these square in a square units. It's a familiar shape, but it is notoriously difficult to get these built correctly. The square square tool actually has three different sections to it. It has a series of window templates in the one section that you use to cut the square that's in the middle. And you know, those window templates make it very easy to do fussy cutting, which we sometimes want to do when we're building these units. There's a chart that gives you the cutting information that you need to be able to cut and build those oversized triangles around the edges, making the unit oversized on purpose. And then we have the trim down section. And that has a series of X's on it so that it's easy to center the tool over the shape when I go to trim it down. I've got this one here that I'm ready to trim. It's a three inch unit. And what I'm locating are the X's by the number three, here, 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 and here. They go over the seam intersections, allowing me to center the tool quickly and easily. It's set up horizontally if you happen to be trimming right-handed, and it would be set up vertically if you happen to be a left-handed trimmer, but you're using those same guidelines for that trim down. Line up the X's, 
make the trim, you have a clean square corner, and you now have seams that are exactly a quarter of an inch from the edge. Lift the tool, rotate the unit 180 degrees, reposition the tool with those same X's and those same diagonal broken lines, but pay attention to the cleanup line so that you know when you're done, you're gonna have a unit that's exactly the right size, that has seams in exactly the right place, that has all of the edges on the straight of the grain and gives you minimal fabric going into your trash can. That's just as important as a perfect unit at, at the beginning. So we, the original Square Square tool does six different sizes. It does sizes from one inch up to six inch in whole inch increments. We created a larger version of this that goes from one inch all the way up to 12 inch. We call that the large square squared. And then we also have the square squared half inch. They all work the same way. They all have the same building elements. There's one thing different. If you buy the large square squared, you're gonna see that it's a two part tool. That's because if I put all of this information on one piece of plastic, it would be way too large for us to easily use in our studios. So the window templates and the charts are on part A of the tool, and then the trim down section that has the X's and the cleanup lines is part B. So think about putting these tools in your toolbox. You'll be glad that you did. They're a familiar shape and you use them a lot, and you'll use them a lot more successfully if you're using the square squared tools. Now my large square squared is a tool that, you know what, I didn't think I really wanted. I actually made this per request. There were an awful lot of machine embroiderers who wanted to do uh, that square in a square shape with their fancy machine embroidery. So I created this tool. It's a two part tool. It has part A that has the window templates for cutting the center squares, correct size. It has the chart on part A for cutting the side triangles, oversized. And then part B is a separate part that you use to do the trim down on this. And rather than putting it all together to make it so big and unmanageable, it's just a two part tool, but it works the same as my original square square. And you know, again, I didn't really think I wanted to do this because I don't do machine embroidery. But what I discovered is soon after I had this in my hand, that not only was it a great tool to work on machine embroidery, but I could also do a block that's called the economy block. That isn't just a square in a square, but it's a square in a square in a square. And I can do that up to 12 inches, but I can also do multiples of that because nobody says that square in the middle has to be a plain square. I can make an economy block in the middle and start to stack squares that are a square in a square in a square in a square in a square. And you know, when we figure something out like that, we have a tool, we start to play with it. What we do is we end up creating what we call a technique sheet. And the technique sheet allows us to figure out all the numbers to be able to make these stack squares in an economy blocks in very small increments all the way up to very large increments. There are charts in there that give you all the information that you need. And not only can you make stack squares, but by rearranging those colors, you can also make those infamous snail trail blocks. And you know, when we created this tool and we were working with our certified instructors, uh, we had a rousing discussion about whether this new larger square square tool was gonna be able to do a pineapple block. Well, yes indeed it can. It's the perfect tool to be able to do that. And you can kind of see it in the middle. It's a square and a square and a square. It starts like that and then it goes beyond. There's a full length educational video on how to do that. We turned the pineapple block not into a technique sheet, but turned it into a pattern called Peach Melba. And, um, there's another technique sheet that we've also developed to go along with this, and it's called the Birds of Paradise, which looks kind of like a fancy flying geese. Fancy birds, flying geese, ha, ha, ha. But you can put a fussy cut square in the middle. You can make that flying geese unit with a pieced 
section in the middle. There's a different kind of pieced square in the middle. And this is probably my favorite where I'm using a shaded four patch in the middle of my Bird of Paradise. And all that information and how you do all that is contained in the technique sheet. And you can see how to do that by visiting our website. So if you're hesitating to get that large square squared in your hand, like I thought I was, don't. There's so many wonderful things that you can do with that. So um, put it in your toolbox. You'll be glad you have it. Now here at Studio 180 Design, we're all about the tools because I know you've heard this before, the right tool for the job makes your job easier. And I can guarantee you that these are the tools that are going to help you build your quilts with a much easier construction process. But realize also that these tools are not just for Studio 180 Design quilts and patterns. These are tools that you can adapt to all the different patterns and projects that are on your bucket list and we call that tuckerizing. Using a pattern, using our tools and creating quilts that are better constructed and easier to produce and ending up with quilts that you can be entirely proud to give, to share, to hang and put on display. So don't hesitate, put these tools in your toolbox, you'll be glad that you did. Now one of our more recently introduced uh, tools is actually the four patch square up. And you're probably thinking, really? You use a tool to square up your four patches? Well, I kind of thought the same thing. A couple years ago, I got talked into doing a project. It had well over 300 of these four patches in them. And I thought, I'm a good quilter. I can do this. So I started piecing them precision. And I went through the first batch and they weren't quite as precise as I wanted them to be. Ah, no problem. I know how to make things bigger. So I just oversized my strips, made the units a little oversized, grabbed a regular ruler and started trimming them down. And you know what? I was cursing every single time I placed a regular ruler on there. I thought, doggone it. I know how to make a tool. So I created the four patch square for those of you who like to bring the same amount of precision to a simple unit that you have when you create your other units. The four patch square up is a tool that's pretty complete. On it, there is a chart that gives you the suggested oversized strips that we like to use to create our four patches, slightly bigger than they need to be. And then there are two trim down sections. There's a trim down section that deals with half inch increments, and there's a trim down section that deals with whole inch increment, because the tool does 12 different sizes from little itty bitty one half inch finished, one inch finished, all the way up to four patches that are finishing to six inches. And what I'll do is when I go to trim down my oversized four patch is find the bullseye. This is going to be a three inch unit. So I'm looking at the bullseye for the number three and placing it right in the center of that intersection. I've got north and south, east and west guidelines for easy alignment. And I can trim up clean up that little bit so I don't have the unevenness that I had when I was trying to do them precisely. And that's a right-handed trim. And again, for left-handed cutters, what you will do is just position the tool vertically so that you can cut in that direction. But after I've trimmed the first corner, I'll simply pick up the tool, rotate the unit 180 degrees, reposition, looking at the same bullseye, looking at the same north, south, east, west guidelines, and also looking at my cleanup lines so that I know that this unit is properly sized. And when I go to maybe put this unit with another unit, maybe I want to team that up with a flying goose unit. Maybe I want to team that up with an hourglass unit. You know, that's what makes this whole process work. Oversizing and trimming down will ensure that the edges line up, but they're also going to ensure that the centers line up. Yahoo, that's a good thing. And we're also exploring this four patch trimmer um, in different ways. Uh, we've got a, a technique sheet out there right now that's called the offset four patch. And that's going to allow me to take the four patches and create those disappearing nine patch type units. And how you do that is on our video. So if you want to see more about that offset four patch technique sheet, 
head to our website and take a look there. But don't hesitate. Put this tool in your toolbox. You're going to be really glad that you've got a tool that works with these simple units. So lots of you have heard me speak about technique sheets. If you're not familiar with what they are, our technique sheets are process-oriented cards that are associated with the Studio 180 lineup of tools and they're going to allow you or teach you how to do other things with your tools that isn't necessarily covered in the basic set of instructions. All of the technique sheets have some similar features. They're all heavily laminated. They have holes punched in them so that you can easily access them and store them. They have a little identification flag up here that tells you this is a technique associated with this specific tool. There's a difficulty rating listed there, one being the easiest, five being the most difficult. All of them have step-by-step -step instructions. Most of them have charts for you to be able to do a technique in lots of different sizes. And all of the technique sheets also have free online educational videos. And you know, adding these technique sheets to your library are going to, he to help you expand and broaden the use of your tools to create additional units that you can easily team up with some familiar units. In this quilt behind me, we have a number of our technique sheets represented. We have a sidekick unit here. We have a high-low unit represented here. This is what we call a shaded four patch, and that shaded four patch is inside of a bird of paradise unit. And in the middle here, we have our economy block from our stock stack square technique sheet. So don't hesitate to put these guys into your lineup as well as the Studio 180 design grouping of tools because these are going to make those tools that much valuable, more valuable than they are right out of the, right, right out of the case. So add them to your library, you'll be glad you did. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to my Rapid Fire Hunter Star. Now this is a, actually the very first tool that I ever created, and I created it to create Hunter Star quilts, bucket list quilts. And whether you're familiar or not, this is what a traditional Hunter Star quilt looks like. But when you build a Hunter Star block, this is what it looks like. And with my tool and my process, I figured out a way that I can create these oversized and trim them down so that when I build my quilts, I get a much higher success rate because everything is trued up and, and squared off and ready to go. Um, the Hunter Star block has familiar shapes. It has two triangles, it has four diamonds, and then it has the shape in between the diamonds that's called a trapezoid. And what I realized when I was working with this block many years ago is that the only thing that had to be accurately cut was the trapezoid. I create these as piece triangles, and the trapezoid has to be precision cut, then add oversized diamonds to the end, add oversized triangle to create a half of the block, and when I put the block together, I could then easily trim it down and clean it up because all of the oversizing is around the outside edge. And I'm going to walk you through the process briefly, but let me tell you about the two tools that we have. The, we have the Petite Star, does four different size blocks for the Hunter Star, 5 inch, 6 inch, 7 inch, and all the way up to 8 inch size. And then we have the Large Star. This is for those of you who like to make those big quilts, you can make bigger blocks, seven, eight, nine, or 10 inch blocks, and you don't have to make so many of them. So both of the tools do seven and eight inch sizes, um, but one does two sizes smaller, the Petite, and one does two sizes larger, that's the Large Star. So we're gonna be talking about the Petite, and let me take a minute and walk you through the process. Those trapezoids are gonna be cut from strips. There are guidelines on the edge of the tool that you could line up on the strips to create precision trapezoids, then instead of cutting diamonds, what I figured out was I could lay down a diamond strip, flip the trapezoids, stitch them one behind the other, give them a press, 
and cut them apart and I'm going to have one oversized diamond attached to a trapezoid with no four letter words involved and that includes the word pins. Now I lay down a second strip, stitch those units on, give them a press and when I trim those apart I'm going to have two oversized diamonds attached to the trapezoid. Straighten out that one edge that's going to receive the triangle and work through quickly and easily, add the triangles, create the two piece triangles, and then use this tool to trim the shape down and clean it up. And what I'm going to do is line up the center diagonal on the center seam and then the star guides, the common one and the size for what I'm making, over top of those guidelines and trim. Trim the first corner, rotate the unit, trim it to exactly six and a half inches by six and a half inches so that every block is square, every block is on the straight of the grain. When I go to build my quilt that requires them all to fit together, they're going to fit together nicely and I can make this in a matter of hours and instead of days and weeks and months. So in the set of instructions there's a bonus project and the bonus project talks about making uh, a handful of blocks, 16 blocks, either in the two color variation, which is the most traditional, in the three color variation, where you've got two colors for your triangles and your trapezoids, and a third color for your diamond points, and also how to create a project in a four color variation. And once you've made the practice one, I'm sure that you're going to want to go and make a bigger one, and rather than having you try to figure out all the math, uh, which you can do with a set of instructions, we've actually created two field guides. And these are formula books that we've created. One for the petite star, one for the large star, that give you yardage information for more than 200 projects, from wall hanging to California King in two color, three color, four color variation. How much fabric do you need for the diamonds? How much fabric do you need for the triangles, for the trapezoids? And so their formula books are great to have in conjunction with the tool. And we've also gone on with this tool and created two full comprehensive books. Again, one for the petite star and one for the large star. Hidden treasures will make a generous lap size project for everyone with a simple, a simple fabric recipe. What can you make from eight dark fat quarters and eight light fat quarters? It's amazing. And this one, Royal Treasures, does queen and king size working with the large star tool because, you know, there's no hard fast rule that says you have to make your traditional hunter star like a log cabin where half is dark and half is light. What I realized before I, when I was teaching classes and before these books were, were created was that I could put two dark halves together or I could put two light halves together and create blocks that look totally different than a traditional hunter star. So if hunter star is on your bucket list, I'm going to encourage you to get the rapid fire hunter star tool in your lineup and work through this, the, the practice project that comes along with and jump into that big project. You'll be so glad and you'll actually get it finished. So I hope you enjoy the little trunk show that we have of patterns that we've created to go along with the tool and some of the projects that are on the inside of both of these books. Do you know about Studio 180 Designs Certified Instructors? This is a team of more than 100 members of very talented quilters who have been through extensive training and they know all about Studio 180 Design tools and techniques and processes. And they're scattered around the US, throughout Canada. We have one in the Netherlands. We actually have one in Sweden as well. And these are local resources that you can invite to come to your area to offer demonstrations, lectures, give workshops, invite them to your next retreat. You know, there's nothing like hands-on help when you're learning a new skill or a new process or a new technique. Now, 
To contact them, you should visit the Certified Instructor page on our website and click on the map. You can find their names of people who might be near you and give them a shout. Invite them to your next event. You're going to be amazed at their talent, at their skills, and at their knowledge about Studio 180 Design and all the benefits of learning how to use our tools and our techniques. Thanks again for joining us. I hope that you've discovered some of the solutions to your piecing dilemmas that you may have had and come across in the past. And I want to take this opportunity to remind you to join us tomorrow, and that's Friday, January 22nd, for our live Facebook chat. We're gonna be running that from noon time to one Pacific time. And if you happen to be on the East Coast, that's gonna be from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Bring your questions, bring your success stories, and we'll see you tomorrow.